Good morning and welcome. My name is Mike Briggs. I currently serve as chairman of the Millican Board of Trustees. We appreciate that you're here with us today as we welcome Dr. Harold Jeffcoat as Millican's 14th president. Dr. Jeffco's selection concluded a search process that began well over a year ago. The Millican Board of Trust Trustees launched a nationwide search shortly following Doug Zemke's retirement announcement in October of 2009. Dr. Jeffco was selected from a pool of more than 80 candidates. Dr. Jeffco comes to Millican with a record of extraordinary performance and experience and career accomplishments most recently serving as President and CEO of Texas Wesleyan University in Fort Worth, Texas for the past 10 years. From the beginning of the search process, his wealth of experience and leadership ability set him apart from the other candidates. If you speak with any of his former colleagues, they'll tell you that Dr. Jeff Cope was a recognizable and accessible member of the university community from the front bleachers of the home basketball games to the school cafeteria, he was a constant presence on campus. I know from conversations with Dr. Jeffcoat that we can expect no less from him with his time here at Millican. And I know that the Millican community is excited to get to know him. I have the utmost confidence in Dr. Jeffcoat's ability to work with the Millican community, board of trustees, and university stakeholders. His passion, engaging personality, and love for higher education will serve as an inspiration for the entire university, particularly as we work together to serve our mission on delivering on the promise of education. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jeffco to the podium. now uh, for several months. We've taken the opportunity to come up to campus as frequently as we possibly have uh, been able to because uh, we didn't want to just arrive. We wanted to kind of come and see and feel and be part of the community. And everywhere we go, everywhere indicated, everywhere on the campuses, oh, once they recognized the name, they, they saw the articles in the newspaper, welcome to Millicum, welcome to Decatur, you know, you're going to love it here, it's a great school. And I go, that's why we came, <laughs> for all those things. But let me take a moment in the back, on the last row back there, my wife, Marie. Marie? <laughs> and for a few months, uh, every year, uh, staggered, my brother John and I have the good fortune to, to have living with us uh, our youngest brother, Dickie. There's Dickie. <laughs> Dickie's a strong critic of the football programs everywhere he's ever been, so I want you to know uh, he'll be telling me what I need to do <laughs> so that we can win on the football field, and I'm going to leave it to the coaches of obviously to do that. But let me just say that um, at, at the outset how pleased we are to be here. Um, we had an opportunity uh, to not pursue presidencies. Uh, we were very comfortable with my sort of retirement, but the fact of the matter is, there's no one at Westland, and I probably myself didn't really really believe that I would be retiring from university life. Uh, and when the opportunity came uh, to take a look at Millican, I can tell you, the first thing I thought about is, is that's where Rose Skidmore went to school. That's the very first thing. Ro and I were teammates uh, many moons ago, uh, trying to make it to the big leagues. He did. And I became a university president. And, uh, um, but no, we, we were really eager to see for ourselves what we had heard about, all the wonderful things. And let me tell you, the Millican reputation is far and wide. It is the school that breathes confidence into its students. Students come from all over the country, yes, not just Illinois and the region, but all over the country to pursue their educations here. They leave with a newfound confidence. They can go right out, and right away, and, and pursue their ambitions and careers. Uh, the faculty are engaged, like 
so many good faculties everywhere with nurturing their students to come forward, they're engaged with their scholarship. The fiscal plan is beautiful. Small colleges don't often have such well cared for fiscal facilities. All of those things for an experienced president or someone with at least 10 years are the kinds of things that you click off in your head when you walk through a campus. But more than anything else is the reception of the, of the community, the board of trustees, uh, and, and the faculty and students since we've been here. And we're just delighted uh, to be here the first day. First day on the job. Eight o'clock, Marilyn was outside saying, <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about this. Um, the, the senior staff has well, been welcoming and forthright and candid about the institutions. And uh, the, as I said to some people coming in, the dashboard was right there in front of me. So uh, everything's out front uh, for us to do. And our future is very strong and very great uh, to do more of the, the Millican legacy. People, I'll just beg the first question uh, that I'm sure some of the reporters in the room have. And, and that has to do, what are you, what are you going to bring to, to, to Millican? And, well, I'm going to bring much what you've had in terms of people who are engaged with the institution, who want to see its success sustained. There might be a little tweak here and there, but that's what you would expect. Uh, but nevertheless, you, know, you have so much to offer to higher education in the state that what I'm going to do is be patient and look at what we can do to continue that success uh, down the road. Um, I have great senior staff members. The president's cabinet are exactly the kind of people I would choose and pick and put in those types of jobs. And I'm confident that we can go forward strong. Uh, we will be uh, delving into a new strategic plan. Um, that's one of the first big items on my agenda. Uh, and it's important to do that because Milliken's coming out of a strategic plan that they've been pretty good at achieving. There'll be some things that will carry over into the new, and there'll be some new things that we'll add. That will be an iterative process. It will be engaged faculty and staff and students and alumni and business leaders and community leaders. The Board of Trustees is leading it. We have some uh, people on the committee that's already been started up to do that. And uh, that'll be one of the first things on the agenda. And then, of course, the continuation of a tremendous start to the capital campaign. Um, I was just recently at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law on behalf of the ABA doing their site visit for reaccreditation. And the interim president comes up to me and pulls me aside and says, I hear Caterpillar has a pretty good year. <laughs> I say, well, so does Milliken. <laughs> and, uh, and that was kind of the end of the conversation. But we've had a tremendous start uh, to the campaign. We want to move um, deliberately through that campaign and succeed in it. And then uh, after we do that, I can assure you that we're going to be taking on some more things to make it increasingly possible for quality students to come to Milliken to pursue their education. That's what we want to do in the long term. Um, give them the facilities, give the faculty the foundation on which to work, uh, and give the students the opportunity to come to this very special place. And it is a very special place, and that's why we're so delighted uh, to be able to be here today. So let me just close with that kind of those introductory comments and see uh, if there's any um, questions that you might have. Uh, and then if there's any me member of the staff who would like to help me uh, respond to them, please feel free to do so. So let me just open it up there. But thank you for being here, and uh, we're delighted. Who's first? You're first. Uh, okay. okay. Can you talk about your impressions of the cater? We love the Midwest. We just love the Midwest. We love the people of the Midwest. We like the earnest, hardworking, straight, look in your eye, firm handshake of the Midwest. It's not that you can't get that at other parts of the country, but it's here. You feel it. It's, it's tangible. Uh, and um, uh, we have had an experience in the Midwest before at another school that way um, at Purdue. Uh, that was a wonderful experience. And we, when we saw that we had an opportunity to come here, we went, gosh, that would be great. And the fact is, we're living right across the street, so I don't have to drive too far if it snows. So don't, don't worry about that. He's coming from Texas. It doesn't snow in Texas. Well, I'm not a Texan, you know. Um, by any stretch of the imagination, we had a good run there. But uh, the, the Decatur community is so welcoming. And, and, and it's a great place to live and work. It's a great town-gown relationship, if you will. Uh, the leadership of the institution is encouraged 
and welcome to be participatory in the life of the community. Uh, this institution plays a vital part of the both economics of the institution, but the cultural of the, of the community, but the cultural life of the broader region. Um, so it's a very good place for us. We feel very at home here already. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Um, you spoke about um, diving into a new strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about this plan? And if so, what do those plans encompass? Well, the plan is in the process of being made. Okay, But the plan is, any strategic plan begins to assess what you do well, what you don't do as well as you might like, what the opportunities that present itself to be take a comparative advantage in the educational marketplace, if you will, for us to be able to excel and succeed. And what are the threats, frankly, to the kinds of things that we want to do. So the board has already started delving into those kind of general issues about, what, a month or so ago, six weeks ago? Uh, we had a, um, a visitor on campus who led us through a conversation about what kinds of things would show up in a strategic plan. But I can tell you uh, that strategic plans are iterative and they carry forward. You just don't stop what you've been doing well. You say, what can we do to improve upon those types of things? And I'm, obviously, I'm being general here. But I can tell you more as, as specifically as I can be right now, it's going to be focusing on increasing opportunities for students to have most of this performance type of learning that is so strong here. Students not only can grow in their subject matter, but they begin to understand how it applies to the workplace. And you don't get that everywhere, I can tell you. That's, a, that's an advantage our students have. And it might speak to, frankly, why our career services and placement, even with a down economy, is doing such a good job. Uh, employers want to have Millington graduates on their payrolls. They're good leaders. They're participatory leadership on campus, and that transitions into the appointment, uh, and also going on to graduate school. So, you know, we did, what, what was the most recent career uh, report that I just read? It was something like 97%, but on average over the last six or seven years, it's been 98 and a half, 98 and three quarter percent of our graduates within six months of graduation are either in the graduate school of their choice or in jobs. Now, if you're thinking about a return on investment, about where you want to go to school, that's a pretty good metric to keep in the back of your mind. So I don't mean to be too ungeneral <laughs> with you, but the fact is the strategic plans are uh, assessments of what you've done over the last, what, seven years, five years, and then taking that and say, what opportunities do we have to, success, to sustain that success? And maybe tweak what we do a little bit to make us even more competitive in the marketplace. And at the same time, keep the integrity of the institution intact. Yes. Now I'm going to be a professor here and start calling on you. <laughs> start asking questions. Somebody in the back? How about a student, if, if not a member of the press? This is just kind of a comment. Uh, Campus Town has been expanding huge in a huge, huge way since the word came out we uh, coming in. Did you have anything to do to stimulate that growth? Did you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me where we've been expanding. <laughs> Maybe I should ask that question first. Bakeries, uh, bars, but, restaurants, um, uh, a bike shop, all those things. Again, universities have a certain um, connection with the community. And to the extent that that connection is uh, part of the lifeblood of the community. We want to be engaged. Uh, I, you know, I read in the paper, and, and I talked to Barry, the Vice President, Barry Pearson, the Vice President of Academic Affairs today, about the potential that we're beginning to develop in conversations about more of a, an approach the institution can do as a partnership with the school system. Now, we don't know where we're very early in that conversation, and uh, you know, I'm just reading about it, frankly, for the first time. But um, those are the kinds of things, if you talk about expansion from engaging in, po in positive ways with the community to enhance everybody and quality of life in the community, that's what we're, part of what we're here to do. If you're talking about um, 
business renovation and refurbishment, that's all good too, because those, those people pay taxes too, I presume, as long as they're making money they are. And I'm sure our students want to help them make money. But nevertheless, uh, a, a, a viable college or university campus can stimulate economic growth, partic particularly around its periphery. Uh, and then also with the overall financial impact an institution makes on the community at large. But I don't know if it's attributable. I doubt that it's attributable to me. I'm sure it's not attributable to me. But I'm happy to see it taking place, because that makes it even more of an attractive place for future students when they come and look at a college campus to say, all right, there's, there's great faculty and the campus is beautiful and I know I'm going to get a good education. What about the other 20 hours of the day? And that kind of thing. So it's very important for the periphery of the campus to have a, um, you have to have some sort of demarcation, but not to be exclusive. You don't want walls built around your campus. And it feel, to the extent that the university can play a role in the broader community development proximate to the campus, I think those are the kinds of things we would like to look at. Along those lines, uh, a little bit of an economic development that's, that's spurred up around here uh, is attributed to the success of Milliken and, and, and the momentum that it has, has gained over the years. Mm -hmm. the Milliken uh, University in the Decatur area is, um, is heightened its awareness uh, and, and so the previous administration has done a terrific job of becoming more engaged in the community. What's happening in Decatur is uh, a resurgence of focus on education and, and a lot of it's for a variety of reasons. Not, not, on, on, not to discount the fact that it's really important for the economic development of this community that education is at the forefront. And our, our shining star in this community is Millington University. And the more you will engage with District 61 and the other private schools, uh, the better off this community will be. Well, I fully intend to do so and, and encourage all my staff and faculty to do so. We need to be engaged as part of our service commitment. As teaching, research, and service is what universities are about. And uh, so I intend to do that. I, I'm already. Marilyn's probably got me invited already to a number of things, and she's working on that with others. But I know that uh, uh, that Doug was very active in the community, and I intend to be so too. And hopefully, uh, that off those opportunities will be forthcoming. Absolutely. Come on now. Come on. All right. I'm gonna have you brief one case here. <laughs> You need to ask me a question. And you're sitting in the front row. <laughs> I'm good. You're good? Thank How about you. the young man looking at his shoes behind you? <laughs> uh, in the beginning, you use the word we a lot. We had opportunities. We were eager to check out the cater. You're the president. Why are you referring to yourself in this group? And who are you speaking to? Well, we is, frankly, my family uh, in checking out the cater. But the fact of the matter is, universities, while they're led, they're they're, they're cooperative organizations. We have shared governance on this campus. It's, the president is the, is, is the president. I'm the CEO. But there's a, there's a strong um, lesson that I learned a long time ago is that presidents to be effective need to be managed up. You understand what I mean by that? So that's a we proposition. It's not an I proposition. Already today, I've been here for since 8 o'clock this morning, actually before 8 o'clock this morning, <laughs> which is rare. Um, already it's a we. Already. And that's important. It, that should, it, it, it's not just the choice of a pronoun. It, it speaks to the type of institution this place is. Now, you can go to others, and it's not that way. And they may still function, they still may operate, but not with the kind of engagement and commitment and buy-in that you get. And, oh, well, that's what we say. We feel it. You can feel that. It's palpable. Uh, at yeah. Well, Michael. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to once again welcome Alan Marie, we're, we're thrilled to have you here, and, and, and I know this will be an exciting time for you and the university. With that being said, we'd like to thank all of you for your support and attendance here today. Uh, this concludes our press conference, and if there are those who would like to talk individually with Dr. Jeffcoat, that opportunity would be available. 
But uh, as of now, our press conference is over. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.